you must begin to understand your values and how God has valued you. Hallelujah. If you cannot be able to place a value on yourself, then no one will. If you cannot as well place a value on yourself, not even the power of darkness will have regard upon your life. Amen? What kind of value? To know, as a human being, we normally complement ourselves based on our standards. Amen? Most of you look at yourself, tell yourself you look good. Sometimes most people, they brag about their educational levels. Most people also talk about themselves based on the level of cash that is their bank account. Amen? You know, sometimes when you see an arrogant people talking, an arrogant person talking, something will be playing the music for that person behind. Most people, when they are talking to you, just know that something has entered their life. Most people, when they are behaving, it means that something has added up to their lives. But when we talk about this value, we're talking about based on the spiritual power that is being added up to your lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you have 10,000 10, in your bank account, your, your tone will change. There's a way you will talk. If you will get a, a, a good, a well-paid job, let's say you're doing a plot, your statement will begin to change. Even your characters will not know you. It only takes grace for us to remember. Amen. Amen. So what are the values that we need to know? Understand your values, know your values, and as well, knowing your values will lead you to your responsibilities. Hallelujah. If you value yourself as a woman, what next that comes in your mind? Which normally frustrates most of the women today. You keep on thinking of marriage, 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 marriage. As if it is a career or an accomplishment. As a man, immediately you start seeing yourself from seeing yourself as a boy, you begin to value yourself as a man. What normally comes to your mind? You talk about as well, marriage, buying a car, buying a house, raising a family. It is a value that normally leads every individual to what or we call taking responsibility. You value yourself, it will help you to take an ownership of that which you are called to do. Amen. Amen. Praise the living God. The same way we frustrate ourselves as a human being based on our heart desire is because of the value that we have recognized. Now I am a woman, what next? Now I am a man, what next? I am still a young boy, what next? I am still a young girl, what next? For example, there's the way you've been talking to some ladies, they will tell you, after all, I am still young. They refuse to do most of the instruction that they are giving to them. Why? Because they are still young. That according to them, they are not yet qualified to follow an instruction. Mostly some young guys, today, mostly teenagers. They cannot be able to do some certain things. They cannot be able to accomplish some certain things based on value. Hallelujah. Amen. So, first of all, how do we work in the area of our values and responsibilities? How do we pursue it? How do we know it? It starts with humility. Praise the Lord. You must learn to value humility in the beginning. The same way you value yourself based on the kind of person you are. You value yourself as a man, as a woman, as a mother, as a father. You must value humility. Because humility can be, I'm not saying it is, so that nobody will enjoy me. Humility can be, or might be, a bridge to every manifestation in the life of every man. You don't know that. Hallelujah. Humility is a bridge. Humility can cause you to prosper in all areas. And humility can cause you to be hindered in all areas. 
No matter whatever you desire or you aspire to become in life, without humility, you cannot achieve your, few, your full purpose in the area of whatever you are desiring to be. Amen. Hallelujah. You may need to start with it. Take note of that. It's a bridge to everything that needs to manifest in the life of every individual. No matter how good, clever you think you are, if you think you have wisdom, if you think you have qualification, if you think you're educated, that you're going to earn good salary. In the company where you're going to be employed, without humility, they will fire you, they don't care about your qualifications. Likewise, in the kingdom of God, no matter how spiritual and how anointed you can become, no matter how anointed you are, without humility, you can't help people. Your anointing is not going anywhere. No matter how you have read your Bible, you know all the Bible now. You even know better than all the pastors around the world. Without humility, you're not going to go anywhere. So you must learn to value humility. Let it be part of your life. Let it be part of your spirit. Let it be part of your consciousness. Because without it, you are not going anywhere. I know that when we look right now, everything seems to be good. Everything seems to look good in our lives. You know, <clears throat> you can ask somebody now. Somebody will tell you, I am fine, I am okay, I know where I am going. Praise the living God. If you are a proud person, no matter whatever you know, you can never know. No matter how you think you will make it, you can never make it. Whatever a proud person knows, the person do not know anything. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the living God. No matter how nice you cook your food, how delicious, people can perceive it by my smell or it can taste. If you put too much salt in that food, nobody will want to eat it. It will become a wanted food. Likewise, pride in every life of believer and not believer. Whether you are a Christian or not, no matter how good things are moving around you with pride, you will become an unwanted being. The worst thing that can happen to you or to every life or every individual is when you come to a point where you are the only one who wants yourself and nobody wants you. Or can I put it this way? You come to a point where you are the only person that is in need of you and nobody is in need of you. May God heal us from the sickness of pride. And deliver us from the forces of pride in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May our bridges that lead to our success, our successful life, never be broken or rejected because of pride. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was giving parables like most people in life today. <clears throat> How do people want to start a life? A lot of people want to start a life from the high place, not from the low place. It's just like a lot of people want to climb upon the grace. They want to climb to the top. <clears throat> Excuse me. They want to climb to the top without the processes, without the price, without learning. Not wanting to know, but they want to make it. President of God. It's like a lot of people want to be a graduate without going to school. How can you be able to climb on top without learning how to climb? How can a child start walking and running without crawling first and learning how to stand? Before a child starts walking, a newborn starts walking, an infant before they start walking, first of all, they will learn how to stand. That standing is not just learning. They are learning how to build stamina. They are learning how to build capacity. They are trying to train their feet based on how to stand. The feet of a child does not know how to stand. If you have ever handled a child, you will understand what I'm talking about. When you carry them at the beginning like this, they can't even stand. You will be throwing them up while they cannot be able to stand. But when they start standing, they are training their feet. A lot of people want to climb a ladder without training their feet. A lot of people want to walk 
in the road called success without knowing that there are some broken bottles, stones, a lot of things that you need to step upon. Hallelujah. It is not everything that comes upon a mature person that makes them scream and cry. It's not true. Most of us, we are used to some certain things. For example, if you are cutting vegetables in the kitchen and you cut your finger, if there's nobody there, you don't even scream sometimes. You just say, ouch. You go quickly and treat it. What do you do? After treating it, you continue doing what you are doing because you are used to it. But when a child cut themselves, they will never continue again. The reason why Christians can no longer continue in some areas, they want to reach their destination without knowing there is a beginning. Why would you want to get to an end? You want to get, enter into a house. Why would you want to enter into a house without a door called an entrance? It's impossible to go into a house. But today, people want to enter into a house without finding out where is the door. If you want to find the door, did you find the key? You still need to find the key so that you are able to be open. I'm speaking in parables now. May God help me to help you to understand. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Looking for the best position in life. Looking for the famous area in life. You can't make it. There's no way you can make it without learning. God is calling all the Christians today. Break yourself down. The time you were, you never called the name of Jesus Christ, but you exercise special, you were willing to go to school. No matter the number of years, it cost you to go to school. Hallelujah. Do not forget, most of us, we never called the name of Jesus Christ at school. We didn't pray to pass at school. We didn't pray to write everything that we are writing, all the assignments that were given to God. But we wrote them according to instructions until we get our marks from our marks, most of us to our qualifications today. Did you not know that satisfaction? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Most of us, we had an argument with our teachers, our lecturers, which we later went back to apologize to them. Yeah. We had a problem with most of them, we went back to apologize to them. But today's Christian, when they have a problem with God, they don't care about anything. They walk away, not even to recognize their mistake in the sight of God. Not even to recognize their rebellion, their disobedience in the sight of God. All in the name of God cannot be seen and God cannot do anything. But at school, you are afraid that your lecturers can fail you at school for you not to get qualifications. That's why no matter whatever it took, you respected them. Even when it was not convenient for us, we obeyed all our teachers at school because we want to get a good mass and we want to get onto another grade, onto the highest level of education because we want to work to get money. Children of God, don't you want to work to acquire grace and become a history and be a blessing? Amen. Praise the Lord. The time we're going to school, we never went to the front of the class to teach our teacher. We never just say, hello, lecturer, please, I want you to qualify me now. I want to be a graduate. But in the kingdom of God, everybody wants to be a graduate. Why would you want to make it because you know, why it takes business? Do you want to make it that you find it difficult to pray to God? In your own space, when you are alone. You want to make it, you find it difficult to read God. You even find it difficult to read your Bible. To study your Bible. But you want to make it. You want to arrive without studying. Okay, let's study spiritually now. Spiritually, you want to manifest and make it without reading your Bible, which is the man. You find it difficult to pray. Can I say something? Most of you that are students, don't you normally study hard during examination? A teacher will give you one big note who can say you must finish it. Don't you finish it. But the single page in your Bible causes you to run your stomach when you read it. Reading it is like a serious problem, but you want to make it. Why is God not doing all this for me? Why are you not doing all this for yourself? No. Why are you not doing yourself 
a favor in learning the things of God. Because if you don't have humility, if you are not humble, you cannot learn. That's why in the kingdom of God, we can't learn. At school, we are humble, that's why we are learning. At work, we are humble, that's why the first week and first month of your employment, no matter your qualification, you are willing to learn from a small person. Is it not true? Even if you are going to be employed to be a manager, as long as you are doing that company, whoever that they are giving you to train you, you must submit to the person for training. Is it not true? We are humble in our areas, but in our spiritual life, which is supposed to be our first priority, we are not humble to learn. You study your book so hard, but you do not study your Bible so hard. When you are going for an interview, you will keep on meditating and keep on thinking all the things that you need to answer an interview, but you have never meditated on the Word of God. Not thinking a five minutes prayer every day. Tell me. Is God a fake God? No. Is God a stupid God? No. Is God your friend? No. Is God your father? He is your father with authority. Ah. Is God a partial God? No, he's not a partial God. He's the God of order. The same way you follow the orders going to school, the same way you're following others now, working in your company, any small thing you start shaking that they might call you to reprimand you. At work! But you never shake for any small thing that you are doing against the will of God. Hallelujah. All of us we want to become personally. All of us we want to be celebrated personally. Everybody here wants a successful life. But this successful life of yours, what have you learned to be successful? You think education is the thing that will give you success. Most people have finished qualified, they don't even have a job. Thank God for your life. Amen. And then you're ready. There are people that have qualification that you can never acquire till you die. Yet they don't have a job. And then you have a job that puts food on your table. You still brag, you're not thanking God for His grace, sufficiency in your life. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to give you a message from above right now. He said, before you start seeking for a higher place, learn to look for a lower place to first. Start from the lower point of view. But today, Christians do no longer have a lower point of view. We have a higher point of view. Excuse me. You want to climb on the sky. Forgetting there are many things that we use to elevate yourself on the sky. You're not a magician. God is not a magician. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You are dead. The only prayer that Christians pray today is the prayer that we lead them up. Not prayer that we lead them to process. We pray a prayer that we lead, that we lead us to the top. We make a request that leads us to the top. We desire a desire that leads us to the top. We never pray a prayer that will direct us to the beginning. To the learning point. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody that tells you that it's very easy to become a Christian, it takes a very constructive calculation, wisdom, and knowledge to become a Christian. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can't just say I'm a Christian. You must learn how do I become a Christian. You come to church and say, you say, learn how do you become a Christian? Now, God will begin to tell you the better thing. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. I hope we are not offending anyone today, but if you are offending you, you need deliverance. Just begin with God. Look at the precious time, privileges that God has given to us all. What are we doing with it? Uh, what I'm doing with my own, my dad, I need to enjoy myself. Excuse me. Uh, hello. Do you really want to be to the top? Excuse me. Do you know what it means to attract people? You think it's beauty, makeup, dressing nice that attract people? You don't know that. If you cannot learn from God, if you are not willing to learn from God, then don't expect to receive from God. 
Did he hear that? If you cannot humble yourself enough to learn from God, did he hear that? If you cannot obey the will of God, do not expect to receive from God. Going to joy can never guarantee miracle, can never guarantee success, can never guarantee blessings. It is wisdom, knowledge. Praise the Lord. What did he say? Read for me the book of Proverbs to connect it with this book of Luke chapter 14, verse 7 to 11. Read for me the book of Proverbs chapter 25. Please, please very fast, I don't want to buy that book. Book of Proverbs chapter 25, read verse 7 and verse 6 quickly. No, read verse here. Yeah. Verse 6 to 7, I mean. Book of Proverbs chapter 25, are you there? Read for me. Verse 6. Do not exalt yourself in the presence of the king. Did you hear that? Keep on reading. And do not stand in the place of the great. Mm -hmm. For it is better that he say to you, come up here, than that you should put lower in the presence of the prince. Did you hear that? It is better God qualifies you than you qualifying yourself. Father, my age is due. I am 50 years now. Why are you not blessing me? I am getting old. Time is not on my side. Excuse me. The only time people become desperate in prayer is when they calculate their age. Stop calculating your age and let them calculate your what? Calculate your investment. Calculate whatever you have put in. Amen. Praise the living God. First, somebody that wants to go to school, if you want to apply for school to for a class, you don't calculate your age, isn't it? Rather, you calculate the number of time and months and days that you have spent studying. He said what again? Do not be boastful, be boastfully ambitious. That is what my Lord said. Never be boastfully ambitious. Do not be a boastful, ambitious person. Praise the living God. The kind of most of our desire here is out of pride. When you have a desire towards God or towards the will of God, I want to say it and I don't care. You need to learn this. Most of our desire are based and capitalized on pride. What is your desire towards God? You want to make it. What is your desire to go towards God? You want to become. That's why a lot of people, they give up on God and join the kingdom of darkness because according to them, Satan can give them what they want immediately. Satan give you what you want immediately without preparing you. He will still break you. There's a way God will finish preparing you. He can't even break you until he finishes. What did he say? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not the end of my word. If that word prepare you and process you, God, can, God, God himself can't even break you. He can't even destroy you until. Is it not what I say? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not the end of my word. And now you are filled with word, prepared to execute the word of judgment of God. He can't. But Satan, after giving you, he can still break your destroy. That's why he gives fast. And God prepares before he gives. Man. My problem with Christians today is that God has given us the privilege to understand him. But we don't want. We don't want the understanding part, we want what we want. We want God to understand us instead of us understanding God. Don't you think so? Everybody, all of us here, we want God to understand us. God must understand. God must understand me. He has to understand me. Because He's a merciful God, He's a good God. Good God. Good God. The only time your company can be good to you is when you do their job that they have. Give it to you. That's the only time they can be good to you. But if you're not working, they can be good for you, to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They will tell you we are not here to play. God is not here to play. Yes. Jesus Christ never came to play. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. At least I keep on telling us most of the things that He has taught us. Try to let 50% of it 
Yes, you are not strong enough, you are not capable enough, you don't know how to do it. At least 50% can add a lot, can contribute a lot to the kingdom of God, including your life and the life of your family. Our desires today are based on pride. You are here praying for a car. My dear, you want to prove a point. God, give me a car and I will serve your kingdom. I will use it to serve your kingdom. Immediately you get that car, you are gone. Amen. Immediately you get that car, you start complaining against everybody that is asking you for a lift. Amen. But you promise God that you, you are not the first person. Amen. You are praying to get a job and God has called you for a job and has employed you to serve you. How can God answer that we can pray? You see, we are praying and desiring based on pride. Anybody that is prideful always get offended when they do not receive their request. Tell me a servant of God that can stand. Even when God is not blessing you, you don't mind. You can never mind that you are doing something. Come, show me. Is it possible? Show me a servant of God that even if God is not giving you whatever you want, you don't mind. No matter how you struggle, no matter how you're broke, no matter how you're not provided for you, you are willing to serve him. But when it's not happening, you get offended. Tell me, is it the sign of humility or pride? Now you know whether you are obedient enough. Nobody is judging you. But you are bringing the fact right in front of us. Why do you get offended when God is not giving you what to pray for? Most of the churches, if marriage is not coming, they start changing churches, they start visiting other churches. Boost. It does happen. Most people can even leave province to go to another province because of marriage. But you can never leave promise to go to another promise because of gospel. Amen. No, but it's not doing this promise because this promise is not working for me. When they say it's not working for them, is it that it's not working the, is, is it that it's not working for them financially or monetarily? Not in the area of kingdom of God. You can do anything for what you want, but you cannot do anything for God, what God wants. It's good. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't want God to get hold of me because there is a part of life that I still want to live. That is pride. Amen. I don't want to be a man, but I want to be a musician. That is pride. How can God make you a star? If you want to be a star, Without God, can't join the kingdom of darkness. There's no need for you to be sitting and be listening to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because whatever you are hearing will be an instruction, rebuke, and rebuke. That is renovation. I still want to ask you a question. Show me a Christian that will continue to serve God, even if they go broke, even if their prayer is not being answered for five years. Show me that Christian. Today, because of our need, our prayer point has changed. What is your prayer point? Amen. Based on what you want. Mostly in churches today, the reason why church is crumbling as if God is not there is because of is based on finances, financial and money. This is what makes Christians so mad and desperate. Imagine, you are offering your God, your services, and you are looking at your age. What if God will hinder you forever and ever based on your desire? Can you be able to stand it? Can you still love him? Do you still remember the young ruler that was very rich? And Jesus Christ told him, sell all your properties. Give money to the poor. And do what? And what happened to the guy? He got offended. So Christians want to fight, serve God, yet they are offended because of the beginning, because of humility, because of God's oppression, not operation, oppress, oppression. 
Because God has to oppress you like an olive seed so that the oil will come out of you. Nobody wants God's oppression. You don't want God's oppression, you want God's liberation. God's liberation, Father, bless me against your will. Change my life against your will. My prayer request must be answered against your will. Why would you want to buy a car when you don't even know how to drive? You have never learned how to drive. You never acquired a license, but you want to buy a car. You bought a car. When you buy it, no matter how nice the car will be, you buy it and people will look at you as if you're a fool. Today, they look as if Christians are fool. We are not fool, but the problem is pride. Pride. Because if there's no pride, that will be that God will enter into our lives, raise us up and teach us our values. What are the values? One of them is like father, like son. Like father, like son kind of value. Like God, like you kind of value. Praise the living God. People do not even see their reflection in God when they want to receive from God. It is not possible. If you do not see yourself like a member of my family, don't let touch my fridge. Because you're a suspect. There's a lot of food in the fridge. You might poison one of you for me to eat. There's a lot of food in the kingdom of God. You might poison one of them to cause damage. Can somebody say you made it? <laughs> Listen, eh? even if you are not, and somebody tell you that you have right, appreciate God. Did you hear what I'm saying? Even if you are not, and somebody say you have pride, appreciate God. Even if you are not, you don't have it, and you think you're humble, and somebody say you have pride, appreciate God for that. Because even if I'm trying to be humble, and somebody say that I have pride, it will even help me to walk more. It helps. It helps. Find out, check it. That is who I am becoming to get to the glory of God. It helps. People say that I have pride. Sometimes they say I want to show off, not you actually. Out there. I want to show off, I want to prove a point. It helps me to build myself. It helps me to keep going low. Because the more I go low, I see everything from underneath. If you cannot discover a tree from the ground, you dare not climb that tree. Because that tree can kill you. There might be a snake on that tree. There might be bees that will sting you to death on that tree. There might be a dry branches on the tree. If you not discover all this, before we climb the tree in the village, we look for those people that think they are better than us. Come close now. You have a lot of money in your bank account. I don't even have money. No, I have it. But I have what you can never have. I have what will take you many years to have. I'm not bragging about it. I'm giving God glory. And I want to offer somebody to work hard. No, no, no. I'm not trying to pass away. You're not trying to. You can't be and you can never be. Man. You are richer than me. You met me when you were nobody. We kept on praying. In front of me, I was no, I'm still nobody. You become somebody in front of me. Man. Are you richer than me? Do you, you understand that? Man. You can never be richer than your father. Your father made a lot of money, raised you and all your siblings, and only you say you are richer than your father. Who have you raised? Man. Have you given birth? Have you spent money on anybody? I have spent a lot of resources on people. Not money actually. Amen. But what did I spend on you to become rich? That made you think that you're richer than your father or your mother. Why do Christians want to be on top without learning? Why is it that Christian, when God is not giving them what they want, they think that there's no anointing in that church? That's why they change churches. It is pride as well that push most, not all, not all, not all, that push most of the Christians to change churches. Man. Can I tell you why? If you are not getting money that you are praying for, you go to where they are doing financial breakthrough. If you are not getting marriage that you are looking for, praying for, you go to where they are doing marital breakthrough, marital anointing. 
And that is where you are willing to give every part of your scent. But when you enter in a real place, it's hard for you to offer. You want to be forced before you can offer. Man. But you don't mind paying anything to be rich. Come, come, come. Financial what? What is the financial break if you want to be rich? Come, come with the seed of 10,000. You are running. You are running with 10,000 to be a millionaire. You are selfish. It's crime. What attracts God is your humility. They say obedience is better than sacrifice. Man. And then why one of you be? How can you grow the way you are without eating nutrition now food? Amen. Amen. How did I become? Do you think I grow big like this without eating food? Stop eating, you will suffer my shop. Amen. Amen. Likewise, spiritually. Stop learning, you will suffer misfortune, miscarriage, setback, stagnation, failure, backsliding. A child that does not eat will end up suffering malnutrition. Amen. Christian that is not eating are suffering spiritual malnutrition. We are here telling you the truth for you to change the thing and stand in there to do state performance. Jesus. Do you know what happened to us when we stand to minister to hundreds of people, fifties, thousands? It takes our energy, it takes our mind, it scatters us in the realm of the spirit. Oh, in the name of somebody has to be fine. And yet Christian doesn't want to be fine. And they're looking for the pastor that they will be clapping for screaming. Say it continue. When they say what you want, you want them to continue. But when they say what you do not want, you cannot wait for talk to dismiss and share the grace for you to walk out of God's presence. Mm. What is that man preaching there? I don't even like the way he's talking to us. Us! Never you recruit anybody regarding the message of God from the pulpit. Do not forget, every offense can be forgiven. But them that offend the Spirit, blaspheme the Holy Spirit, cannot even be forgiven. And you want to recruit somebody in your mess because of pride. Start with humility and you will see God in action. I know that it takes love because God is a key for it. Like, you know, you know, you know, can I do it? In God, there's a key that he, 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 with his process, he processes everything carefully. Oh. He processes and prepares you in details. Do you hear what I mean by details? Man. If God wants to start with one of your fingers, he cannot touch any part of you. Man. But he finishes with one finger. That is the reason why Christians say that God, in God, there's a delay. God does not do things fast. But when you go and ask in the kingdom of darkness to give you fast, my dear, you are already broken, a broken module that cannot be fixed. That's why Satan saw you like that and gave you because he knows that you're a fool. Imagine. Is there any child here, any father here? Is there any father or any mother that can give their 10 year old child a car key to drive? Can you do that? God cannot do that as well. If you can be like these little children, Amen. it will be easy for you to enter the kingdom of God. And you want to enter the kingdom of God like a mature person. You want to enter the kingdom of God with a mature mindset of humanity. Not the building mindset of the spirit. It's just me. present most of the Christians today. I want to represent you by speaking about myself. My problem with my God is when I look at my age, I run out of time and patience. When I look at my friends that are making it, I didn't know, I do not know, I cannot tell where they have started. And I don't know where they belong. It pushes me and frustrates me to run out of patience. But ah, where do I belong? Because if my friend is making it and I'm being challenged, does my friend belong to the right batch? Why must I be anxious, jealous, to become like somebody? Do I know their story? 
Because the reason why you look at your friends and you're frustrated to make it have money, have money, have us, have all this rubbish. You look at them, do you know their story? Do you know how they story? Most what you post on them are using the power of darkness. How about you have that people use money to get married? Why can't you use your own ability in God that you need to build? Finances. Do you know who they have killed? And God is just telling you, only you sacrifice yourself to be not anybody. A sacrament that will not cost you so. Check, if you are wanting to make it, is it out of pride or out of humility? Is your desire based on pride or based on humility? That's why God will continue to test every human being in every church. People are praying for financial breakthrough and it's not happening. Why is it not happening? When it doesn't happen in that church, you change the other church. I think that man of God is more anointed than this man of God. Nobody is highly anointed than anybody. It's the same spirit of God. Amen. But what keeps us expanding is experience Amen. and sacrifice Amen. and be obedient to the voice of God. Amen. When you are not obedient, you cannot move. But when you are obedient, you keep on moving. Amen. Do you know that? Amen. If I tell you to walk, if you are not walking, you will be standing, isn't it? Amen. Somebody far away behind you. If I tell you to keep on walking and you are walking, they will walk past you while you are standing. So it is not all of that high level of anointing. It's not about high level of understanding, high level of knowledge, high level of sacrifice and commitment with obedience. Where am I coming from today? I don't know. Humility. Can you say again humility? In the beginning of my life. It's very important to do the will of God for me to be successful. Thank you. Amen. No matter how tough of most of you are, you are going to school, you are studying. Where you not stop? You don't even you, 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 don't, you know that most of you did that including me, there was this teacher that I never liked. But you must write their subject. Amen. Study their subject. Amen. And you know what? Pass their and when you are passing the subject, do not pass it to them with attitude. Amen. Amen. You must fake smile on your face to pass it Amen. to them because you want a good man. Amen. You don't love God, but you don't even you can't even pretend. Hmm. Do you know there's a way you will not like church? You there's a way you will not like God, but listening and being obedient to Him can make you the most successful person on earth. You know what? I don't like my job, but you do your job, they give you salary. I don't want money and you get your money, but you don't like the job. Most of you are, are you not applying for another job? Are you not doing for another job? You don't like that job, but you are forced to do that job. Amen. Why are you forced to do that job? Because the situation is now controlling you. Why can't the Spirit of God control you? There are most of the things, instruction, that I don't like hearing from God. But I have no choice. I have to do it to get my pay. Amen. Just the way you don't like your job, you have to do it to get money in your bank account. What is wrong with Christians? As a human being, we think we have common sense, but spiritually we don't want to hear common sense. You want to celebrate, who is going to celebrate you? It's better for God to celebrate you. Than them. You want to attract people. First of all, attract God so that God can make you a light that will attract people. Humility. Your prayer point in the church is it based on humility or based on pride? What is the reason of that your prayer point? Nobody is praying to learn, but everybody is praying to become. I know you will come back to church next time because I'm hurting your feelings. Let that feeling be hurt now. Let me organize 
financial service here. Call financial deliverance and breakthrough. Millionaire service, that's what, that's what they tell you. Those people that attend the millionaire service, they are very broke now. Because the more you attend millionaire service, the more they take from you without teaching you. Check the plan of everything in every service. Those people that attend the millionaire service, they have gone from bad to worse. They have gone broke. They are so poor. They sold their house to offer in the church. God cannot tell you to sell your house and bring money to the church. Listen, anytime I say that in our ministry, pray for the place I need help. God cannot tell you, did you hear me? God cannot tell you to sell your shelter and bring money to the church. It is a lie from the bottomless pit. Because if you try that because I'm not anointed, you will end up being a street person and sleep under the bridge. Amen. Bridge will end up becoming your shelter. Amen. That is not the wish and the will of God for you. Amen. He has given you a shelter. Now learn from me. Learn. I'm not asking for much. Give me yourself. Some people think that it is your money that will buy you the ticket to heaven. Amen. Your money will not buy you a ticket to prosperity. Amen. You will not listen. You can break God. Even if you like this John 20 million, you are like. You can be highly educated. No matter how highly educated you are, are you powerful? Or you don't know what they do to become powerful. It is not education that makes you influential, nor beauty. It is the power behind that. What is the power? The power of knowledge. Where is the knowledge coming from? The knowledge of God, of the will of God, and the knowledge of Satan. Most people now, there are people that doesn't mind living with a sankuma in their house. But Christian, they care less, they don't care about living with God in their house. And there you have, you still come to church, call the name of Jesus Christ, and witches and wizards are still attacking you. Why would they still have power over you? After how many years of going to church, you think that God is not powerful. God is powerful. But when you eat what the Father gives you, it will help you to grow in stability. Mm -hmm. If the church is not doing what you want, can't you do what God wants? How can He limit you? And not even left the church because according to them, the church is not good. Why can't you be good as an individual? Amen. What are we talking about? We are not talking about be famous. Be, make God famous. Do the will of God. Not the will of the church. Amen. Hey, what is wrong with people? Satan keeps on using his keys to blackmail you and then you are saying yes, it's true. Like I said, no matter whatever you think that you know as a private person, you do not know anything. That's not what you can do. A servant of God doesn't know and can never know. God is all knowing God. As I'm standing here, I do not know anything. That's why it's easy for him to use it. Because he only brings what I do not know. How can I know? What is faith? You are having faith based on what you see. Based on what you do, based on what you have become. Excuse me, your faith now is you will definitely get a job because you know you have a certificate in your hand. <laughs> your faith now is that you will definitely be a mother because you are going to be a woman. Your faith now is you will definitely you will be a father someday because you are going to be a man. Humility, 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 humility. You pick offense in everything that happens to you that doesn't make sense. Humility, humility, humility. Humility is one of the top bridge, one of the top bridge of success. Because if you are not humble, you can't be patient. If you are not humble, you cannot learn. If you are not humble, you cannot listen. 
If you are not humble, you can't pay a price. If serving God is an offense, obeying God is an offense to people around you, then they are not the real people. And the actual people that God has assigned to you. Praise the Lord. Uh, just on this part, we will meet in the book of uh, Romans chapter 12. I say, value humility in the beginning. You need to value humility in the beginning. Amen. Amen. Do you know that a successful businessman can lose employees because of pride? Amen. Don't you think don't you that people resign in a company because of the pride of the manager? Amen. The pride of the owner? People that are too spiritual, that has the real spirit of the living God, can never survive in a church where a pastor is overwhelmed with pride. Those of you that God will use tomorrow, start building yourself now. Humble yourself. Keep on bringing yourself low. In fact, look for somebody that will keep on telling you you have pride. No matter how humble you are. In fact, I need help. Tell me that I have pride. Keep on telling me that. In fact, say it. It's not a problem. Even if it hurts me, no problem. When I get home, I'm going to do a lot of evaluation. Instead of being offended, evaluate yourself. Instead of being offended, do what? You might think you don't have pride, but when you're being told you have pride, that is a danger that is waiting for you ahead of time. It will surely manifest. I know this thing. I know, listen, I know it. Pride is not my friend, but I know it. Like I know, I know it in details. Did you hear that? I, I know it. It's, it's, I, I am not not on my Bible, but I know all the right. I, I know it. I know the handwriting of it. I know the statement of it. I know it. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to another level. Praise the Lord. After starting in humility. Now you need to know that you have a service in humility. And as well, knowing your roles. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. The service is in humility. You need to offer your services in humility. After you discover, you know your values. Your values does not and can never make you better than anyone. The, the reason why there's division in the church is because you think more highly of yourself. No humility at all. Value humility in every service. Yes, by God's grace, I am a preacher, but I am no better than anyone. We are all the same human. God can use some of you more than me, far better than me. I know that. But I work hard to make sure that nobody stands in my position. I don't want to be replaced. I want to finish and leave. Not to be alive and step aside. I want the only time I can step aside is when I'm gone. Did you hear that? That is supposed to be your priority. Not to see I speak in tongues more than this person. I'm a spiritual guy more than this person. I'm more qualified. Who qualifies you? Who told you you're qualified? What you need to value, you do not need to value yourself to be higher than any other person. Brother the Lord. What should I need to discover about myself? The grace of God given to me according to the specific service, duty, calling of God in my life. Amen. Responsibility is where it comes with responsibilities. If I know my responsibilities, then I need to know the kind of value that I place on myself. Hallelujah. Do you know my responsibilities? Like now, there's a way I behave when somebody doesn't understand me, they think that I have pride. There's a way I behave now, somebody will think that I, I make myself bigger than another person. Like, nah, I'm not the boss. I can never be. I can never be. Listen, I am not even better. What I am today is a privilege. Man, what I am today, listen, man, whatever you become tomorrow is a privilege. Man. Do not take it for granted. Man. Do not use it for competition. Man. I am not doing this because I want to compete with anybody. I'm not doing it because I want to prove any point to anybody. The point of superiority 
I am not doing this because I want people to worship me or to recognize me. I am just doing this because I want people to recognize Jesus Christ. And as well, know themselves and know that they are delivered. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the living God. Uh, you must also know, based on the responsibility that has been given to you, the value that you place on it must not be a selfish value. A lot of people want to be a preacher today, want to become preachers today, because of the benefit. What is the benefit? What is that you are benefiting? Because if you do not know your story, you can die of the pulpit. The enemy will strike you down. If you do not know your God, you can't just stand here to preach because you don't have to preach. You need to stand here to preach because you have the power from above, the throne of God, to preach. Amen. You don't just stand to preach because you can preach. Not because you know your Bible, not because you're educated, but because you have the order to function and give it power from above. I cannot teach because I have the Bible, because I know the Bible. First of all, understand it's a privilege. Hallelujah. Amen. The kind of value that you also place in your responsibilities determines how successful you will become in the area of service. As a servant of God, the list of people that you teach can never be a right place. Did I give you that revelation? In the list of people that you are teaching, it can never be a right place. You know why I'm saying this? Those people that you are teaching might not even accept you. Might not even want to hear from you. They will even hate you. They will even, they will even want to classify you. Have you seen something when they enter the church, you are talking to them and looking at you like this? To them, you are a suspect. So, with all these good things, it's the right place. That's why you need to understand that the world is not our place. Amen. Jesus Christ never came. So the world, the midst of people was never right place. Sometimes this man will go on and hide. He will go out and start hiding. He will take cover. He will disappear from the people. Sometimes he will throw stone at him. Do you still remember? It can never be a right place. Ah, I think I'm in a wrong place. Excuse me. Because they're not clapping for you, you have to make people to clap. No, you don't need to clap for me. It is heaven that has to clap for me. It is heaven that has to clap for you. You see that there and let me break you so you can be wounded. A broken person can never be happy. Is it not true? An angel, have you ever seen an angel person laughing? Huh? Hello? Have you ever seen an angel person laughing? No. They cry. So you can't be crying and then dancing. The value that I have placed in my service with God is that I will never serve God because of you. This is the game, isn't it? Let me also talk to you, young couples that are still growing. Hallelujah. As a woman, as a man, you will end up falling as a woman, fall in the hand of a man that can twist you away from God's purpose and God's presence. Amen. If you fall in the hand of a man, you can fall out of the hand of God. Amen. Why must a man take me out of the value? What like I place my value on this. I value this and I'm doing. And the man will tell you, if you want to prove your love for me, leave it. You walk out. And when you walk out, you are looking for whom to blame for your misfortune and mistakes. A lot of Christians, they both men and women, they place a value on their partner more than God and the will of God, even in their life. Why would a man be better than your life? Why would a woman be better than your life? Don't you know who you are? Praise the Lord. You can be a private figure, but God created to be a light to the world, not to an individual. Do you value that? And tomorrow you say, where is God? When God was asking, where are you, did you respond it? And now you're asking, where is God, waiting for him to respond. One of the best things you can do for yourself today is to forget about those mistakes, forget about whoever you are, and look for the will of God, the rightful will of God in your life. Place a value on it and say, no one can take me out of God's service. Not out of God's miracle, out of God's service. If you have placed value on the things of God and whatever He has done for you, or whatever He's doing with your life, you will not be expecting miracle by now. Because miracle is just an attraction. Miracle is a body push. Did you hear that? Miracle is 
the word. It's directly the word of worship. Like now, I'm expecting miracle from God. No. No. Blessing, manifestation of it. Amen. Amen. So let's value your service to God. Whatever you are, whoever you are, never you think that you are better than another person. The value that you place on yourself matters a lot. What is the value? I am better than somebody or I am serving by God's grace, therefore I will not take it for granted. You know some people in the church today in the company at the place of work. Most of them, because they value the place of what they are doing based on their responsibility, they place it with pride. In terms of without them, they are irreplaceable. Without them, nobody can do it. You know that when you come to church, when you don't see nobody can say, come on, get out. Get out. If I, get out. If I, if I ever see that in your heart before you say it, you are fired. Praise the Lord. You come to a point where if I cannot preach, nobody will preach. Who am I to say that? Am I God? If God takes me out of here for three months and says, don't be here for three months, I, I won't even be worried. As long as he's standing here, if anybody comes here, we'll wear the garment. If anybody is standing here, the garment comes on point. As I'm leaving this place, the garment remains. It's like a cloth in a wardrobe. So with me, or without me, this work can be done. Amen. But the only way it cannot be done, or cannot continue, is your decision. Amen. But as for me, I know that without me, it will proceed. So why would you think that without you, nobody will make it? Like a lot of people in the family, you want them to worship. Your responsibility as a breadwinner does not guarantee you to post people to be a tyrant. Amen. The value that we place in our responsibility, even in our home and working at school, matters a lot. At school, you think that you are the most, uh, what, what they call it, most intelligent learner, isn't it? And when you walk in the school now, everybody is praising you, you are walking. Hello? Uh, you are walking, everybody is praising you. Which club that will enter that school will mess up your brain, go crazy. And they will think you are a drug addict. Somebody will take over and become the best parent. Whatever you think you are good at doing, Someone can be the best at doing it. Amen. Appreciate God for privilege Amen. and not for advantage. Amen. Now you see that every responsibility that you are privileged to acquire anywhere you are, either at home, either in the church, either at work, at school, anywhere you find yourself, you must know it's a privilege. Hallelujah. What is the privilege that they're giving to you? It is not because you have more. It is because you were selected. Did you hear that? The value that you need to place on your responsibility to do it very well, like it's a, just a privilege. God's power, God's will. Now because of this, he loves me. Now I have to be generous about it. Amen? What did Pastor say? say? He said, Whatever you are doing, if, if you are in an area of encouragement, in the act of this, what is it? Or he who encourages in the act of encouragement. He who gives with generosity. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Be generous about your giving and stop complaining. Why must we ask to pray? Why must we ask to pray? Right? Why must we? Why must we? Stop saying we. You are the only one that had the privilege to offer financially. You are the only one that has the privilege to be an encouragement. You are the only one that has the privilege to be a teacher. Did you hear that? You are the only one that has the privilege to be a singer. You are the only one that has the privilege to become the security of the church. You are the only one that has the privilege to become whoever you are in your family. If you are a breadwinner in your family, never you can solve anyone. Because I want to tell you, the table will shall turn around. And when they turn around, your plate might be empty. While your plate might be filled up. And they judge as well. The table obviously will turn around. Because the person that, that can replace you will do it more than you. And you end up being a stranger. In a company where you are working, people are watching you. If you think that nobody is looking at you, every eyes are on you. The table can stay turned around to be continued.
Amen. God Almighty, God, the blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.